Hello, everyone. Welcome Hi, to the everybody. stream. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Today, we are here to talk about something very dear to our heart, cosplay, the cosplay community, and crafting, and how to get started. We want to say thank so much the It Gets Better project for having us here. And we're very excited to talk to everyone in the stream. And just because... Um, it will be important. We did film this a little earlier in advance. So all of us and the hosts will be in chat answering your questions and talking along. We also wanna highlight that there is some cosplay senpais and costumers and makers experts in their own right also in the chat. So if you have any questions, concerns, um, and uh, just comments, please let us know. We're here to chat for the full hour and we're excited to get to know each other. So to start us off, my name is Sarah Kulik. I lead influencer marketing at Riot Games. Uh, for those that you don't know, it's a game company and we have a number of titles. Um, we also have a very passionate community and content creator um, ecosystem. And part of that group is cosplayers. It's a group that we're very passionate about supporting and they're very creative and artistic. But cosplay isn't just... Um, isolated to this one community. It permeates all popular culture, all games, comics, movies, and we're going to talk a bit more about that today. Um, myself, I've been cosplaying for over 22 years. I think it's closer to 25 now. Um, so it's been a while. It kind of ages me. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, my first cosplay ever was Sailor Moon. And uh, you'll see a photo. My mother took a very lovely photo of it. But since then, I've actually kind of pivoted my own work. I love so much theory crafting and taking something that is 2D and building it into the 3D space. It's such an awesome problem solving um, problem, right, to tackle. And um, so I really identify as being a maker and a builder, but that's not necessary to be a cosplayer, right? And since then, I've actually juxtaposed my small height, because I'm also a five foot woman, um, with very large kind of um, intense builds. So lots of armor, um, a lot of times gender swapping or um, gender bending for my costume. And for me, that's really rewarding because I get to explore different aspects of my personality and um, as an introvert, kind of break out of my shell. So that's a, a little bit about myself, but we're also going to talk about the other hosts and introduce them. So yeah, yeah. okay, then I'll go. Um, hi, my name is Chelsea, uh, also known as Riot Ania. Um, I am a strategic advisor at Riot, and I work on Valorant, which is our FPS game. Uh, basically, I, I help people to make good decisions about things, um, which is entirely separate from uh, what I'm talking about today, which is, of course, cosplay. Um, I have been cosplaying playing I consider starting you know that I started about seven years ago in 2013 uh, the picture that you'll see here is uh, of Wodash dash in 2013 that was my my first kind of intense cosplay I'd like scrap together a few things in the past that technically like count as cosplay but at the time I didn't even know that's what it was so like in my head I started in 2013 um, I actually share uh, a lot uh, with Sarah in terms of my cosplay interests because I uh, have been a crafter um, and an artist my entire life. It wasn't until I was in my early 20s that I realized that those things could connect and, you know, being able to express my love of crafting and gaming into the cosplay world. Um, but as a, a five foot two person, I too love to feel uh, badass and intimidating and cosplay as uh, like really powerful badass characters. Um, one of my favorite things to build is prop weapons. So uh, that that Darius axe that you see is is definitely one of my favorites. Um, and let's see, I think uh, I think that's about it about me. Of course, you know we'll talk more later. But um, why don't I hand it over to Mel? There you go. Hey, Mel. Hey, hey, <laughs> Mel. <laughs> hey. Hi, I'm Mel. I'm Riot Swim Bananas. I work on Sarah's team with Influencer and Influencer Marketing. Uh, I have been cosplaying the least amount of times of all the humans you're going to see in today's chat, including some of these senpais. I've only been doing it about five-ish years, uh, so I am the baby of the group that's here today. Um, for those of you who have not met me in person, which is all of you, I am six feet tall, 
as you can see in this photo in the center, <laughs> um, that is Sarah <laughs> next to me. And I'm wearing seven inch platforms. So as a creator, as a cosplayer, my my love of the craft is not so much the sitting at home and building things. It's being in person with other humans at in conventions or being online, dressing up in costumes and communicating with the community. So I tend to make things that are over the top or dramatic in some manner, shape or form, whether that be pretty, whether that be big, whether that be silly. I like to do things that are like, hi, pay attention to me. I like attention. <laughs> so that's kind of what my niche, I guess, in cosplay is. No shame. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we all cosplay for different reasons. Yeah. And last but not least, of course, is Michelle, who has not said a lot because she's been very focused on something. Uh, Michelle, would you like to say who you are? Hello. Um, I am Michelle D'Antonio. I go by Miss Seiru online. And I'm actually, as you can probably tell, a little preoccupied. And that's because I am trying to make one of our characters from League of Legends. Her name is Nico. Um, we did a Twitter poll to do a one hour like closet slash fast cosplay on Twitter and we everyone voted for Nico. So here I am half in makeup. Here's my wig. We're going to see what I come up with in an hour. So I will be kind of really distracted. But to answer your questions, I've been cosplaying for 16 years. Um, I am the newest one on the team. I'm the newest one to join Riot. I work with Sarah and Mal as an influencer manager. Um, and I got into cosplay because I'm a huge weeb and I really like anime and I really like sewing. Uh, my favorite things are sewing and expressing and challenging myself um, sewing, like sewing wise and like just seeing like how I can push myself and bring the characters to life. This challenge today is how to do that in the least amount of time possible. So as soon as we started filming, I started, I cut my tail right away. Um, and I think you guys are gonna be checking in with me throughout this, right? Yeah, yep. we will definitely be doing yeah. that. Sorry, I didn't share it at the top, but Michelle is doing a one hour cosplay challenge for us. Um, I do, don't always recommend this at home for uh, the, it's not for the faint of heart, but if you are inclined or curious to take part, we would love to see you also tackle the one hour challenge and see what you can come up with, whether that's with cardboard, uh, paper bags, construction paper, foam, any materials you have. Lots um, we kind of, yeah, we kind of call <laughs> them co closet cosplays and you may see them in some communities where you just kind of use the materials you have at home to make something fun. And it, it could be like really useful um, to add accoutrements for everything from your Halloween costume, your daily wardrobe, for your drag, anything. So we're gonna kind of talk a bit about that today as well. So Michelle is working in the background. We're gonna check in with her a couple times. So keep an eye on her if you wanna follow along and see what she's working on. So first, um, what I would like to do is just kind of talk about what cosplay is, because it does mean a lot of different things for different people. And um, some people uh, have certain prescriptions of what that is, but I think as for us and other community leaders, I think cosplay is for everyone, honestly. Um, whether you're a crafter, you buy costumes, you really love Halloween, like I said, um, it's not something that is reserved for once a year. Um, so cosplay is actually a conjunction of the terms costume play, um, and it's really popular all around the globe. So which is as that it's like awesome to connect with people in different regions. Um, and there really isn't any borders, not even I would say language borders, right? Because we all kind of have the similar passions and we share um, almost a, a, a shared language, a visual language. And we're all honestly just different flavors of big nerds. So um, whether it's for comics, video games, or that awesome new TV show, like I, I love embodying those characters and fully transforming myself to something um, bigger than life, different than I am. It helps me as an introverted person grow out of my shell and try different things and different aspects of my personality, which is really cool. So for me, I, uh, like I mentioned, I've been an artist my entire life. Um, and one of the things that I really love about cosplay is that I can do a bunch of different types of art to come together mm -hmm. as one big project. Yes. So um, I love to sew and I love to paint and I love to sculpt and I love to you know knit. Um, and I can think in the world of 
every one of those, I can immediately think of five people who do all of those things better than I do. But something that I get to really celebrate is that I can do all of those things. And so for me, cosplay gets to be not just a celebration of, you know, my favorite video games and a community that helped to raise me, but also being able to celebrate like, heck yeah, I built this whole thing and I sculpted this and I sewed this yeah, and I right. dyed my hair and, and all that fun stuff. Um, so for me, I really identify as like a cosplay creator, which like Sarah was mentioning, you know, isn't any better or worse than the folks who mm -hmm. want to buy their cosplays. Um, you know, I'm probably not the person who's going to be like, running around a convention, like hyper fanning out with people. Cause I, I often say that uh, with cosplay for me, it is 95% the enjoyment of creating the thing. And then 5% going to a convention, wearing it once, putting it in storage or selling it. And then I'm like, all right, what's the next thing I can build? Yeah. I am the opposite of Chelsea. <laughs> the opposite of Chelsea. My favorite part of wearing costumes. And a lot of the reason why I started doing cosplay was I being with other humans who have a similar fandom of me and nerding out and getting excited because being in person or online, no matter where you're at, if you're wearing an outfit that is a costume, you are announcing to the world, I like this thing. Do you like this thing? I like this thing. And you are just a walking beacon <laughs> of those humans in the world. So I'm the opposite of Chelsea in that I power through my crafting part of the experience in order to get to a the moment where I get to go put it on, go out in the world, put it on, go on the internet and show off and be amongst my people. Uh, so cosplay can be, whether you are really into spending forever like these two ladies are with details and crafting and coming up with cool solutions, mm -hmm. or if you're just more of a, a ham like me, and just want to be like, girl, hi, <laughs> let's have fun. You can do that too. And that is not any lesser than or not as valid. It's just a different way to go about doing it. You know, back when I used to do commissions all the time, I had so many people reach out to me because they're like, I love to build and sculpt, but I don't own a sewing machine and that's a problem. <laughs> you know, so there's always ways to kind of yeah. like mix and, mix and match with your different skill sets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I've, I've gone to a lot of events with these ladies and, and including Mel through work. And um, it is interesting to see how we, we, we I think we complement each other, right? And that's mm -hmm. what it also the community, you find folks that are different, but also alike. And for me, it's like a little nerve wracking to wear that costume for the first time and in public, not everyone does. Some people just may build for themselves or just mm -hmm. do photo shoots. Because like, we haven't even talked about it. Some people do this professionally. Some people just do it for hobbies, right? I would say most people just do it for as a hobby. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's hard to permeate through that. But um, Michelle, did you want to chime in at all? Or are you, you feeling a little too busy at <laughs> I the can moment? chime in. Uh, I just finished my tail. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I no, I this is my leftover Anna fabric. I do have spray paint. If I get it, if I disappear, I'll probably be spray painting the bottom of this Nico's, col okay. Nico's colors. Uh, but let me update my webcam. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I like cosplay. Kind of a combination of everything above is I really like sewing. I actually used to sew professionally in the film industry for eight years making costumes, um, which is funny because I am doing some really fun stuff today that is not sewing well. Like I'm turning a skirt into a top. <laughs> In a little bit, but um, I also am done with like buying. That's the fun part about cosplay. But my favorite part about the cosplay, like just everything about it, is not only just making the costume and wearing it and getting all the attention and cool photos. Is I really like the people. Like I, everybody in this call, I've met through cosplay. Um, all of my friends I've met through cosplay. I've traveled literally the world because of cosplay, and it's like such a warm. It can be such a warm, welcoming community. That's like, oh, you guys so great and so loving and so welcoming and like so accepting like I've, I haven't met a different community that's as accepting as the cosplay world um and I, I just think it's awesome so yeah that's what I'm gonna say I'm gonna continue to jam on this all right good luck keep at it <laughs> we, we'll uh we'll let you be and check in a little later um and and that's uh, also another thing I wanted to touch on a bit is um, Michelle's obviously working with some found items, but and and great expertise. But there's also really um, simple items you can use. So early on, when I was cosplaying, things that I really loved to do was take objects that were found, or like tissue paper, cardboard, and make them look like something completely different. That's part of the challenge for me. Um, I would take, for example, I had a crossbow that I made once, and I made it out of a Pringles can. 
and then I built on top of it as a base, right? And you start to build and construct on top of it. So um, even if you feel like you don't have the money for materials and you want to craft, you don't have to, but if you want to, there's lots of things that are just around you that you can use. I've seen amazing builds 100% out of cardboard and you would never be able to tell. It takes practice, but it's also like a really cool challenge and a skill in itself, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, let's actually throw it to, we've been talking a lot about cosplay and some examples of different um, types of costumes, reasons why people wear costumes. Let's actually take a quick peek at a video that we worked in uh, collaboration with Beatdown Boogie a couple years ago. For those that aren't aware, we have a world tournament every year. And at those world tournaments, it's kind of like an esports competitive event. Um, we also like to bring out influencers, content creators, our artists, and um, kind of share that with our players and create like a really welcoming, awesome atmosphere. And this is kind of one example that shows the, the vibrancy of creators all, from all around the world that we invited and some really awesome costumes. So check it out. <laughs>
I love that video and I love all the videos that we we work on to highlight and all the features that we work on to highlight our content uh, creators and cosplay community. Obviously, I'm biased, but they're absolutely <laughs> gorgeous and amazing and just some of them even like role playing and really get into character. For me, that's one of the coolest things, seeing um, one of your favorite characters manifest in real life right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Mel talked a bit about that, but it's like that icebreaker. It always mm -hmm. feels good because you're like, wow. I am, I'm going to be best friends with you. <laughs> you. Yeah. It's, it's one of the things that I do whenever I get that like serious FOMO from, you know, missing a convention, I'll go on YouTube like two weeks later and find all the amazing videos that like people have put out of all the different cosplayers. Cause then like, even if I couldn't be there, I at least feel a little bit like I was there. Cause Aww. I got to see all that. Well, I know that, like talking a little bit about how we're all kind of stuck inside and a lot of co a lot of content creators and a lot of cosplayers have been taking that feeling of creating these music videos at conventions and translating it into the online environment. So mm -hmm. a common common meme it obviously is the pass the brush example where people are putting the brush up to the camera, painting themselves, becoming a character and then throwing it to the next person. So that yeah. is a way since we're kind of stuck in COVID and it's hard to feel like you can't go to conventions. That's a similar way that people have used this medium to celebrate online and come together as a group. We also want to highlight some amazing LGBTQ plus creators that we think are doing excellent work in the community as well as amazing crafts. So um, I think Mel is going to take us through some of those yeah. and we're going to show some photos and a little bit about their work. And some of them are probably in the chat right now, too. So if you have any additional questions, they are the best to answer it. So let us know. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Rapid fire cosplay, awesome human time. No. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. All right, first up we have Kelton FX. So Kelton FX is doing a gender bend personal take on Poison Ivy. So this is Poison Ivy transformed into a gentleman. Uh, what I love about Kelton's work is Kelton is a professional makeup artist first, cosplayer second. So a lot of the work that he does with his costumes focuses on how do I transform using makeup? How do I use my skills and prosthetics or other things like that to become a new person or become a new character? So if you're interested in learning more about specifically the makeup section of cosplay or how to transform or use your makeup skills if you already have them okay, in this yeah. medium, Kelton's a fantastic place to start, in my opinion. Yeah, good, good point. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have Mika Burton. Uh, so Mika is one of those creators that is a intersection of a lot of different nerd fandoms. So here she is wearing her own character from when she was in Critical Role. This is when she's wearing Rainy. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so what I love about her character design and what I love about her as a creator is she takes her love of other nerd fandoms, in this case Dungeons and Dragons, and combines them together with her own creative expression, making her own characters, creating her own stories, coming up with her own ideas. So if you're interested in being able to make your own original character and cosplaying that and what that journey is like, reach out to Mika. She's fantastic. Keep it on. We have Smile on a Song up next. Um, here he is cosplaying Giorno from Giorgio. Um, obviously fantastic at combining both the seams, the seam building or the costuming process of this, as well as the makeup. So a little bit of the combination of the last two creators we just saw. Uh, but he, when we reached out to him and asked him whether he'd be comfortable being shared as a part of this uh, stream, he wanted to share that his art and gender identity are both such an important part of who he is. And I know the two communities of cosplay and the LGBTQ intersect a lot. And the, a lot of cosplayers really identify themselves or have expressed themselves by exploring cosplay. So if you're interested in that journey or how he kind of has intersected his LGBTQ identity and his cosplay identity, go say hi. Uh, next up, we have Rosie G Cosplay. Uh, so Rosie G is in Pearl from Steven Universe, of course, a show after all of our own hearts. Uh, they're an amazing customer who builds incredible costumes, specifically focusing on a lot of the fabric details. So as you can see in this costume, they've taken like the exaggerated silhouette and kind of poofed up the sleeves and poofed up the hips and done their own take on this character. My personal favorite that I've gotten to see in person from this creator is Sarah from Labyrinth, uh, a dramatic, over-the-top, beautiful ball gown. So if you're ever curious and you want to level up or learn a little bit about how to make these exaggerated silhouettes, Rosie G Cosplay is fantastic. Also, they're 17. 
And that makes me slightly sad for my own skills. <laughs> <laughs> so impressive. <laughs> We got Super X Luigi here, who does a lot of cosplays of superheroes. So here he is doing a gender bent rogue. And I know we've used that word gender bent a couple of times. Gender bent is when you are taking a character that identifies as a different gender from what you are portraying it as. So an example here, rogue typically is portrayed as female. So Super Luigi has taken rogue and transformed it into what would rogue look like if she were male or presented more male. Uh, so that's what gender bend is. Crossplay is when if Super Luigi were to try to make him, who identifies as a male, into a female version of rogue. And that is what crossplay is. And so if you're ever curious, what, when we're using those two terms, what that means. Yeah. So if you're interested in learning more about how to be a superhero, how to dress up in superhero costumes, specifically Super Luigi is a great place to start, or those gender bends that we talked about, taking typically female or male or whatever characters and transforming them to another gender. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and last but certainly not least is Adieso Theo, who here is cosplaying Tony Stark, obviously from the Marvel movies. Uh, when we reached out to Tony, he was specific, or sorry, when we reached out to Theo, aka Tony, um, <laughs> he wanted to share that by cosplaying Tony Stark for the first time was how he started to discover his own gender identity. Um, it was by wearing this costume and feeling empowered by being Tony Stark that he realized that he was trans and he wanted to start his transition. So if you're ever interested in learning more about that process, what that journey was like, uh, potentially how to be able to experiment with that cross play versus the gender bend, uh, feel free to chit chat with Theo. And that's it. Those are our senpais. Yeah. Yay, senpais. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Yay. Yeah, th these folks are amazing, and we really appreciate them giving us the opportunity to highlight their work and be here and join us today. Um, actually, this last um, story with Theo reminds me a bit of something that Chelsea had mentioned a little before about mm -hmm. like some of the motivations and the reason that she cosplays. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm gender fluid. Um, and so for me, what that means is that I, uh, well, I don't identify as a woman and there are kind of different aspects of like masculinity, fem fem femininity and genderlessness that I really mm -hmm. um, want, feel and want to express at different points in time. Um, and I found that for me, the, the cosplay community has been a really amazing place for me to be able to express that uh, mm -hmm. more clearly. Um, you know, the ability to like, you know, I, I joked a little earlier about like loving to cosplay like, you know, badasses. I've, I've talked with Sarah about like, you know, cosplaying like little angry men. Um, yeah. And there's a part of me that, you know, in my in my experience of masculinity feels really empowered being able to cosplay as, um, you know, like my my gender bent Darius, um, you know, uh, being able to embrace that. Um, and I know that that's an experience that people have not just on, you know, um, as a, a gender identity. And I know that, you know, we've talked a little bit about like the LGBTQ plus community and uh, different experiences there. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I love is that I, you know, I haven't had the experience of someone coming up to me at a convention and being like, aren't you dressed a little too like masculine to like, you know, be a girl or whatever. Um, but I also want to call out that like, you know, that's not everybody's experience too. Um, and there are a lot of folks who, you know, really want to present themselves in certain ways at conventions and can sometimes get pushed back on that. Yeah. Um, so I want to call that out that, you know, as much as we, um, we advocate for the cosplay community to be really inclusive, whether that's, you know, um, you know, cross-playing or uh, gender bent cosplays or, you know, uh, cosplaying as a race that's different from your own or as a character that's different from your race. Um, we all really advocate for that to just be inclusive. You know, it's like Sarah said at the beginning, there's no wrong way to cosplay. Everything that you do as cosplay is fair game for us. And I think uh, to touch on that and how some people might not feel comfortable and or this is very new. So I'm sure there's some folks here with us that have never tried it before or just really love Halloween or whatever. But maybe we can talk a bit about more about the community, how they could get started, um, connect mm -hmm. with some of these folks to yeah. provide a safer environment for them to realize their best self and try new things, right? So mm -hmm. Mel, what would, what would you say um, in terms of community and recommendations? My opinion is if you are at all interested, you are like, hmm, that sounds a little bit fun, or I'd like to try that one time. Just do it once. Go on, go on Amazon, go on the internet, type in whatever character you're interested in cosplaying, find a costume that probably already exists, purchase it, 
put it on your body and go to an event or go online to an online event. And there's one of two things that are going to happen. You're going to fall in love with it like I did, or you're going to hate it. And it's going to be not for you. And you realize right then, well, it's not for me, but you already got your Halloween costume done for the year. So <laughs> process, right? Like you're done. You don't have to worry about it. Like, great. It's July. I got my costume done for Halloween. I had a fun experience or something that I learned about and I move on. That's how I started. That's, that's, that's my recommendation. And also, like historically, I actually cosplayed a lot on my own. But um, as I, I got older and kind of broke out of my shell a bit more and met other cosplayers, that was actually mm -hmm. one of the most fun things for me to do now is we'll grab a bunch of our friends or Mel will even connect with people going to an event. And <laughs> sometimes there's huge groups. I think what is the largest group that you've cosplayed in, Mel? Oh, do you think the princess probably one? It was probably the princess one, which uh, I is a we did a bunch of poodle skirt princesses. So it was not my idea; it was one of my friends Anne's idea, where we took all of the Disney princesses and put them in like poodle skirts. And I think there was something like twenty of us or so that That's went so cool. to um, a convention first, and then we did a photo shoot. But it was there, we had every almost every single princess. I was Princess Leia because I've decided that she's a Disney princess now. Um, and then you just. <laughs> We got all lined up. We all had matching like skirts with little decals on it. It was an immense amount of coordination, but it was also so much fun to just be a rainbow of princesses standing in the entrance of this convention and just watching the tiny, like the little that girls, the little boys <laughs> run up to their favorite princess and just like Aww. try to hug their skirt. It was adorable. Okay. okay. There's a point that I want to add on to that in just a second. But first, I want to take a look, everyone to take a look at Michelle's, uh, what she's doing right now. So she has a headband and she's um, attaching zip ties to the head headband, which is this is a great use of kind of a found household item mm -hmm. um, to because you, you cinch them very tight and you can attach them like foam or cardboard to that. And it's really nice and light Whoa. on your head. Oh, it's gone now, but it's going to come oh, back. back. <laughs> um, and so that's a really creative way in a pinch to add things to like a wig or your head, just to a headband. I just thought that was really cool. Now she's gonna be glue gunning some things down to it. So also Chelsea mentioned earlier that she worked on commissions. So Ooh, if, yeah. the, if there's something that you really want that's custom or really tailored to you, or you have your own vision in your mind and you're not a crafter or you're still learning, mm -hmm. um, that's another great resource in, um, as an alternative to buying a costume online or eBay or something like that. There is a lot of great sites and that they be, they're beautiful in their own right. But if you want something really big or a suit of armor, um, you can commission it from an artist. So there's a lot of cosplayers in the community that will do that, which is great. Um, I yeah. think there's a few that um, I immediately think of um, Stella. Mm -hmm. um, who are a couple other names that um, come to mind, ladies? Uh, Stella is Stella Chu, for those of you oh, who sorry. Not immediately yeah. understand yeah. what she means by Stella. It's okay. Sorry about that. Castle Corsetry? Yes. Oh, Castle yeah. Corsetry is amazing. I have uh, my Sith robe that I've worn a couple times with you, Sarah, is from Castle Corsetry. It is beautiful. Does, beautiful. does Bensi still do props? Bensi does not do props anymore, but she does adorable cat collars now. So oh, if you want to make yes. your cat be a cosplayer. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> well, and that's fair, too. Some people yeah. just cosplay their pets right yeah um, and Kohalu, like, i don't know Kohalu, Kohalu and etsy um, is another right. one that makes a lot of commissions or oh, yeah. um a lot what's becoming more and more popular which you might have noticed behind me is 3d printing uh so a lot of cosplayers will 3d print a file and then sell the sell the 3, 3d print materials online so you might have to spend some time with it and still finish it and paint it but it's a yeah. good way to like start or a good way to get something that it, you might not have the skill set to be able to carve naturally out of foam mm -hmm. yeah that's, no, that's how i do a lot of my stuff because i yeah, that's pretty cool. That's it's nice. so <laughs> very fancy and also kind of technically challenging for those yeah. that for, for I don't recommend it for the I don't recommend starting there. Starting but... there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds really easy. Like, oh, something just gets 3D printed and then it, you know it's it's easy to work with. It's like no the 3D printing also has a pretty high uh cost to entry for buying a, a 3D yeah. printer. That's why I'm yeah. suggesting buying somebody else's 3D print <laughs> for the first time. Yes. One of the other things that I wanted to talk about now where we're talking a bit about community is, um, so we've said like, hey, you can make costumes, you can buy costumes. There's a lot of um, 
things that you can also learn from the community. So mm -hmm. maybe we could talk a bit about like the educational aspect and that there is community leaders as there that are in the chat right now that can answer questions. But um, some of these folks that do it a little more professionally or even just for fun, mm -hmm. provide resources online. So there's mm -hmm. lots of tutorials, um, patterns that you can print out and mm -hmm. kind of that will help you along the way. I think Mel and I have both used some um, patterns from Kipatsu oh, yeah. before, especially when we were working on our, our KDA stuff, which you'll see in some of the pictures we have. We have some um, group cosplays that <laughs> we did KDA last year. Oh, that's if you don't know, it's from League of Legends. It's our music, one of our musical bands, and they just look very um, over the top and pop star ish. <laughs> one of the things that um, we, we touched on it a tiny bit before, but I love that um, Michelle is kind of finding some found items and altering probably some bits of Yumi here. Oh, I don't know if, did we mention who Yumi was that she was working on? Oh, Nico? On? Oh, sorry, <laughs> not Yumi. <laughs> Yumi's another champion. The other also very, very cute, cute thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, Nico is, uh, uh, Chelsea, do you want to tell us who Nico is? Oh, sure. So uh, Nico is one of our, our champions in League of Legends. Uh, she mm -hmm. is, belongs to a, a race uh, in our lore um, that is a kind of a hybrid creature. So we have a few different hybrids within our lore, uh, you know, kind of like part bird people, part various things. Uh, and, and Nico is a, a kind of hybrid human chameleon. Uh, so Nico's, you know, kind of um, her her looks in the game are that she uh, um, has like this big tail. She's very brightly colored. You can see some of the face paint that uh, Michelle has going. Um, but what's cool is, is Nico's, Nico's ability in game is uh, her passive is that she's able to look like other characters, yes. um, which I think is super cool because she's basically like the epitome of what a cosplayer is, but as mm -hmm. a character in League of yeah. Legends. Yeah, yeah, something that comes to mind that we've actually kind of skirted around a few times that I also feels really important to call out. Like, I think a lot of us fall into the category of we love to cosplay fandoms that we love. You know, Correct. you've talked about um, how for you, you love to be this like beacon of like, I love Sailor Moon. Please come <laughs> talk to me about being a magical and really awesome. Is that like, that does a character and be like, I like how that person looks. And I, I almost got uh, pulled into a, a cosplay group uh, for, for Fate Grand Order and I've never played the game. I knew the character because I you know watched Fate Zero and Fate Stay Night and stuff. But like um, a, a really like well-known cosplayer who's done some outstanding builds, we actually met her at, uh, at PAX East 2013, Danielle. Um, mm -hmm. She cosplayed Zyra and had never played League of Legends before. Yeah. She's just like, no. my boyfriend really loves point. the game, you know, and I just really loved the look of the character and I wanted to be there to kind of support that fandom, even though I'd never played the game before. So like, you also don't have to feel like there's this gatekeepy, like, oh, I need yeah. to play the game. Otherwise someone's going to come up and ask me what my main is. You know, like that yeah. doesn't have to be the way it is. You can just like the look of a character and cosplay it. That's totally That's fair. As someone who I think was a part of the same fake group that you might have may or may not have been trying to get pulled into, <laughs> who has never played the game nor watched any of the animes, but still participated same. and has the swords behind me. Uh, yeah, no idea what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> and I also got I got to be a Stalfel, which um, has yeah. a, a very interesting gender identity as well, which was really fun. And I hadn't played the game. I also have a friend who really loves Persona 5 and really felt I would be a good match for a character. And I I wasn't going to say, no, I've not played it. I can't, right? Um, some people feel that way. And you may also come across that in the community. But you know what? I'd say just, uh, you don't, you don't need to, you don't need to internalize that that there's no um, cosplay police neg neg negativity. There is no cosplay police. <laughs> and if they are, there are cosplay police, they're not legit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If anyone there is comes no up authority to you there with a, with a badge or a bandana or anything, they're not. It's not real. <laughs> right, and yeah. I think you brought up like a really cool point, Sarah. That like, you know, your standards for your own cosplay doesn't have to be the things that you hold to other people. So, like mm -hmm. I mentioned before, I only make my cosplays. I won't buy one because that's what I enjoy out of it. That doesn't mean that that's you know my perspective on how everyone has to do cosplay. I also don't particularly like to cosplay things from fandoms that I don't appreciate because I I love the idea of like I'm getting to know this character by creating mm -hmm. what it is that they wear. Yeah. Um, so you know your standards for what you make for yourself doesn't have to be like the dictation of what the rest of the world has to follow. Yeah. 
And um, I think something we didn't, we, we kind of touched on a bit already, but, um, and as a, as a panel of, I would say more feminine than masculine, um, you, we did share some features of some, some male cosplayers, but also um, it tends to be, a, there is a predominantly female or mm -hmm. a feminine um, kind of the, I don't know, say thematic is not the right word, but within cosplay, but there is a mm -hmm. ton of also really awesome um, masculine, male and gender fluid creators. So sometimes um, if you, if you've seen, look at us and say, I don't identify with these folks or any of the examples we shared, um, perhaps someone in the chat can recommend mm. some other folks that would, would feel comfortable and or uh, relatable to those yeah. here because i know it's like we we're, we can't speak for the whole community because um we can only speak to our experiences and how mm -hmm. we felt about the community which has been very positive yeah but that's not always the story right With right the... oh go ahead chelsea oh i was gonna say and just calling out like not just on the gender component but also like cosplayers of color like that's an important mm -hmm. thing yes. to call out yes. because their their experience you know at conventions and cosplaying different characters is meaningfully different i think yeah. yes. um and so i would encourage you if that's something you want to know more about or kind of get the lay of the land there like absolutely reach out to this creators chat please please feel free to spam um any any of those creators that you'd want to highlight yeah we want to see them what i was going to say is cosplay as a medium is constantly evolving um, I'm sure as Sarah Chelsea can attest to, who've been doing this a lot longer than I have. Uh, it started someplace years ago and is still evolving to this day. Um, and if you aren't identifying with the, oh, I don't really like to go to conventions because it's large crowds of people, or I don't really like to go, I don't feel comfortable going out physically wearing something like that. There's a huge community of cosplayers that just make online content, whether that be on Instagram, TikTok, et cetera. There's a huge buttoning community that only make costumes that are meant for a camera that's maybe five feet away from them, their cell phone, and yeah. they make a story in that moment with a five second costume and they express themselves in that way. So what we're trying to say is, please don't let this be the end all be all of your exploration into the cosplay world. There's a lot of other people out there who are different than us, similar than us, have different stories and experiences or have evolved this medium in new directions. So please, 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 uh, if you're at all interested, like I said, just Type in hashtag cosplay in Instagram <laughs> or hashtag your favorite character or hashtag a character that you enjoy into any of those social medias. And I guarantee you, you will find a cosplayer or find humans that have dressed up as that person. If you want to just kind of put your toe in and start seeing what's out there. Yeah. And if you have any questions, recommendations, or would like to show us your own work or creations, uh, please send it to us on Twitter. I believe um, on this stream, you'll have seen our handles, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll also be looking at um, links in the chat. So please send them our way. So right now we're seeing Michelle. She is, what is she working on right now? Are well, you, are you getting close ish to done Michelle or how are you feeling? Is it stressful? Yeah, I'm doing, um, yeah, I'm a little stressed out. Um, <laughs> I'm doing Nico's um, jewelry, which Ooh. I have, I made an, um, a costume for an Aztec person a long time ago. So I have all this jewelry. If I can just figure out how to open this. Oh, um, no. Container. Really Container, why? Container. Help us. Like, Oh, there here we, we go. go. Um, Perfect. Yeah, and so I have all this like beautiful Aztec jewelry that's just gonna be a part of Nico now. Um, you know, I feel like it makes awesome. sense for her. That's <laughs> so cool. Why not, right? What is that? Uh, what's uh, been your favorite part of the build so far? <laughs> this very short so, build. So far, her headband has been really, really fun for me. Um, I'm after I'm done with this, I. I mean, there's obviously a lot of details missing. I'm going to step away for a little bit to put my wig on. Okay. Um, nice. If you guys are cool with that. And then I'll yeah, kind of do course. a reveal. And then yeah. basically I just have to glue my extensions in and put everything on and hope it looks okay. I was sure going to paint gonna some awesome. lines on here, like her details, like I did on the skirt, but um, I opted in for a tail. So Michelle is just going to leave now and um, show us the final one hour um, product, which is very impressive already looking. This is like way better than I could have done it in that short amount of time. So, so she's going to go get ready and then we're going to 
we're going to see. But um, in the meantime, I think we're going to close out and just thank everyone in the chat who participated, um, answered questions, spent time with us, um, and listened to our stories and took part. Um, Mel, is there anything in closing that you wanted to talk about just to wrap up the, the conversation and um, any tips or uh, tricks? My suggestion is if you have a character that you're interested in or you like, look up that hashtag on the internet. Go find them. Go find your people. Go explore the internet and it'll be wonderful and great and perfect in every possible way. <laughs> I believe in you. Mel is very optimistic. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it feels great. <laughs> Uh, so I'd say um, when I first started cosplaying, uh, I was a, a senior in college. Um, this was the time in my life where, you know, I was having like ramen several meals a week. Um, and I know that there are a lot of folks who are maybe scared to get into cosplay because of like a barrier to entry in terms of cost. Um, because there are a lot of really outstanding uh, cosplays that are out there that are made with materials that are pretty expensive to get a hold of. Um, just know that there are ways around that. Um, and there are a ton of, you know, cosplayers who put videos out there that talk about, you know, uh, cost effective ways of cosplaying, different materials that you can use. Um, you know, I didn't even touch like thermoplastics until I was a few years into cosplay play because that all felt way too expensive for me. I was just like yeah. the master of cardboard and craft foam. Um, just know that like you can make some really outstanding stuff with things like cardboard, like Sarah was mentioning. So if the fear is like, I can't afford those materials, just do some hunting. I promise you'll be able to find things that you can build for a lot less maybe than you think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I really do think I, I mentioned before that cosplay really helped me, um, become a larger than life version of myself, connect in physically with a community as well as kind of build up my confidence um, as, as an introvert. So I know I keep saying that, but seriously, I, I also like as someone who suffers from severe anxiety and, and depression mm -hmm. through my life, it's been really a beacon and a creative focus for me. And I really love that. And I would hate for anyone to feel like they can't. So irrelevant of um, your size, your your skin color, your body shape, your gender, um, how you identify. I honestly believe this is something that everyone should be um, welcomed into and be allowed to explore. Um, it it is just such a, a fun and uh, ca can be carefree pastime. Um, and also very stressful because like, I won't tell you how many times I've stayed up till four or 5 a.m. trying to finish something right before an event do not recommend, um, but it's part of like that blood, sweat and tears that we mm -hmm. were talking about that can go into a costume. But even going down to the kind of the costume store or the corner shop um, and picking up something that is a, a little more affordable, um, maybe won't last the test of time, but still makes you feel like you and fabulous and um, like your best self, I think that is more than worth it. Yes. I have a question. No. <laughs> okay. Yes. What's, what's everybody's next costume? Go. Oh, good question. Oh. <laughs> yay. So um in in celebration of loving to be little angry powerful men, uh, I'm gonna be <laughs> cosplaying Bakugo from my hero. Oh, yeah. Um and I also want to call out, you know, as we're talking about these things, there are some creators who are busting stuff out like once a month. More power yes. to them. I haven't cosplayed in almost two years uh, yeah. because life happened, you know, and my fiance and I bought a house and I have a job and things like that. And, you know, um, that doesn't make me any less of a cosplayer than I was two years ago. And if no. you need to like take a breath from the community because of, you know, your own stuff, just know that that's okay. But yeah, I can't wait to call people idiots running around screaming at them like, Baka! and like, I'll kill you, and, like blasting them. I'm so, I'm so excited. <laughs> so fun yeah actually that was the thank you for mentioning that because that was one of the things i was thinking about that i couldn't remember a few moments ago um because i also i made a few things and uh, some personal projects and then i think we worked on kda last year mm -hmm. but other than that it's been quite a while since yeah just like <laughs> um it's been a while since i've worked on something and because of work and yeah. focusing on career and I have t three fur babies now. It, it's a lot, um, but I always come back to the crafting. I always still think about it. And when I'm truly inspired by a build, 
sometimes I'll work on that for the course of six months to a year. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll, I'll knock something out real fast because I don't expect it to last and it's, it's okay, right? It does, not every single project needs to be uh, a magnum opus, right? And yeah. I think that was one thing that caused a lot of anxiety and pressure for me, actually, when I was a younger cosplayer, when I would see these amazing, talented people creating content nonstop. But then I kind of realized that that's their journey. That's their experience. I don't mm -hmm. need to do that. Um, and the, yes, our communities would love to see more. But what's most important is taking care of yourself, right? And doing what's right for you. And um now that I have a better balance, I feel great about that. And I can still be a cosplayer and I can still create when I'm inspired and when I'm ready to. So that's awesome. Yee. I'm one of those people that probably does way too many cosplays in a year and it's probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do kind of lecture her because Mel doesn't like to sleep and I like Mel to sleep, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, my next cosplay that I'm working on um, is Yasha from Critical Role. So if you're not familiar with the character, it is a barbarian woman who has giant skeleton wings that come out of her back. Yes. Uh, so I have a sword that's already been 3D printed. It is taller than Sarah. Uh, <laughs> and then I have uh, the base of wings that are like made out of aluminum that I bought from a creator on Etsy uh, that when they are fully extended are 11 feet in diameter. Cause I have to make it proportional to how big I am. So I'm very excited for the very dramatic over the top skeleton barbarian. Yes, that's awesome. <gasps> I love that, like that drama, that yeah. like that the character oh. and the story that comes with something like that. I just, yeah. I'm also, um, I love making really big props. So one of the things that I was working on that paused on was um, a Repentia. So that's like Warhammer 40k in my yeah. house is a really popular. We love it. We make the minis. Our pets are all named after it. Um, but just these these for lack of better words battle nuns are very um interesting to me it's kind of reminds me of almost like that daria silhouette mm -hmm. and so she's got like a giant chain sword that's like as big as me and uh shackles and she's just a very intense powerful woman and it's just that sounds exciting and i've also worked on other 40k costumes so that and i think there might be another group cosplay that we were talking about with our work friends that Yee. might be league of legends related Ooh. so we'll see Yee. yeah oh, okay I'm here, michelle. I'm here michelle oh are we ready? Are ready? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're so ready we're ready i dropped my airpods um so yeah all right and then i have right. so i'm so ready, ready. Drum roll. No. Drum i drum can't roll. believe i did this in an hour Oh my oh, god! That is amazing! It's it so good! This chameleon! You're so cute! Oh, oh my god! I, I can't it. believe you did that in an hour! Look at this! Like, the silhouette looks so good. I'm just so, saying, we picked like, the right person for that challenge. Seriously. Yeah. Also, th this is no like, uh, <laughs> just like time warp thing that's happening right now. We're not. This is this, this is real time. In an hour. Real time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, just to remind everyone, this is a skirt. <laughs> yeah, let, yeah, take <laughs> us altered. through the journey. Tell us what this is. So it's a skirt. Um, I made this. You saw this one on camera. So what I would do, there's a lot of details missing, but obviously, like, you can tell who I am. Yeah, um, you got the also, if I, I, like, did my body paint beforehand. If I was going to, Nico has a whole bunch of body paint all over, so yeah. I didn't have time to do that. I obviously, hold on, let me put this up higher so you guys can see me better. Um, Nico is way more colorful. Yeah. So like I probably would have like painted my more or whatnot. Um she has a bunch of gold here. Uh I think I lost you guys. No, um, we hear you. Oh, no, we hear you. We can still hear you. Maybe Yeah, maybe you can't yeah, hear us. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, here you guys. Okay. So um yeah, and then I quickly made a dance the belt I had, glued some stuff, but I don't know. This is like my tail. I would, if I had more time, paint it, put some wire in it, make it go round. Style my wig. My wig's kind of a little, a little crazy, but considering I made it in an hour. Girl, I just want to say, like, your level of crafting in an hour is something that I would have completed in like a month. So, <laughs> just ten out of ten, amazing. 
It also probably doesn't help that my crafting is five minutes of crafting, and then I'm like, I'm gonna watch some Netflix, and then I know, right? of crafting, and I'm like, I'm gonna eat a snack. <laughs> like, this Joe, is- you look amazing. You did an yeah. amazing job. Thank you. Real. That was. Fabulous. Thank you so much for doing Thanks. that. Thank you for sharing with us and and being a great sport and. Um, like now I'm just going to point everyone. If you need to make a, a costume and a pinch or you need advice, go to Michelle, Miss Yeru. She, she's, she's a girl. <laughs> also, uh, I'm going to say on behalf of Michelle, cause I'm totally just going to decide this in this moment. If you were like, yo, I want to see more details of what that costume is. She's going to post pictures of it on her social media. Yeah. I am. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you well, that's I will add the painting. I will add more the body paint. Decision made. You're mm-hmm. welcome. <laughs> so it's a little more complete, but I'll be like, hello, world. Sounds good. But yeah, I won't sell my wig more so you guys can see realistically what a wig looks like in an hour. Well done. Sounds fabulous. We'll we'll look forward to that, Michelle, and we'll also look forward to seeing um, some other examples that, that hopefully the chat is going to send us over and we're going to share and retweet um, and discuss together. And I guess in closing, I just want to say thank you, everyone who joined us, the cosplay senpais and experts in the chat, the rest of the hosts, um, the stream, the tech, um, the It Gets Better project. Uh, it's been an absolute joy and a pleasure to be here to talk about something we're all passionate about and we're hopefully some folks here are inspired and or um, curious about more. So uh, please ping us online um, on Twitter. I don't know if it's going to be here or already on the the chat, but um, we look forward to hearing from you and um, happy pride. Yeah. Yay. Happy Happy pride. Happy pride, everyone. See you later. Video games. Absolutely. Yeah, there's going to be more video games. And I believe (laughs) there's a DJ set after this. So um, keep your eyes and ears peeled. See you, friends. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.